That's a lot of loans, but she's not alone. What's going on, people? This is a new type of news segment update commentary. I'm not really sure what to call this, but hang with me. You know that we like to commentate on pretty much everything, but particularly Asian topics are very important and we know you guys want to hear about them. Here is my take on eight relevant pieces of news. Let's go. The first thing I want to talk about is the tragic passing of a guy who had a huge impact on Asian cuisine, even though he wasn't Asian, and that is Anthony Bourdain. I'm not going to talk about the details of why he passed, but if you have friends or family or people that are close to you that seem like they're having emotional trouble, uh, definitely just reach out to them out of love and care. I mean, there's also the hotline, but I think most importantly, reach out to them. Anyways, so Bourdain didn't really cook Asian food. He didn't find it, he didn't create it, he didn't rename it. But through all his shows and commentary, he was really able to make everyone, including a lot of Asians, respect and appreciate other cultures beyond his own more, and namely Asian culture. He was cool, educated, well-traveled, open-minded, very, very, very respectful. And yes, he would go to very far off lands that were probably sometimes uncomfortable just to show it off and tell that story authentically. He wasn't just some tall white guy going around the world being entitled and flexing his privilege. Oh, look at this exotic culture and food. Let me take some credit for popularizing it. He treated Asian cuisines and stories as equal, if not greater than the West. And doing that on Discovery Channel and CNN was very helpful. Whether it was a far off village in Malaysia or Tokyo or wherever, he was just able to spotlight amazing stories. I mean, Anthony Bourdain is one of the inspirations for our channel too. For example, Jason Wang from Xi'an Famous Foods and Eddie Huang from Bauhaus, as you guys know, they explained how much of an impact Anthony Bourdain had on their business and their careers. In short, Bourdain was genuinely a champion champion of non-Western cultures, and he did that in the mainstream, so thanks. The main takeaway is that Bourdain was successful, he was influential, and he had mainstream acceptance. He didn't need to champion a bunch of unknown cuisines and cultures, but he did, and he did it genuinely. He even ate with President Obama on a plastic stool in Vietnam, so rest in peace. Let's switch gears real quick into topic number two. Being a YouTuber is not what it's cracked up to be. And I don't know if this is news to you guys or not, but there's been a lot of articles covering this for about the past year due to the changes in YouTube. And just most recently, Aja Dang, which is a Instagrammer slash YouTuber, she has talked about publicly her struggles with handling her $200,000 worth of student loans. <gasps> Woo! That's a lot of loans but she's not alone. Student loans are a very, very real thing. So just make the most of school. That's all I'm gonna say about it. In general, a lot of YouTubers are struggling in their own way and we feel it too. Whether it's view count, demonetization, your cost structure, the type of videos you make, the city you wanna live in, I'm sure you guys know this, but producing YouTube videos can be very time and resource intensive. I know you guys may not always be able to tell, but there's a lot of production that goes into this stuff. Yes, it is our choice to do this. It is an interesting career path, but no, definitely by all means, it is not a walk in the park. I'm gonna be honest, sometimes it feels more like a walk up like a, a rocky summit with like wind and like lots of like pollen and you're like, you have your allergies are going crazy and it's all, you're sneezing and then your throat starts itching and then you like gotta take Claritin, but then it's like too late. So then you try to do the nasal uh, spray like Flonase. You know, if you guys know us, we don't really specifically tell you about our situation. We don't tell you how stressed we can be sometimes and you don't have to feel bad for us but just know that a lot of youtubers out there that are not getting a ton of views everybody's just trying to figure it out the main takeaway is that just like any other artist YouTube success has a huge wide range of meaning there are people who are millionaires there are people who are still broke and there's a lot of people in the middle and based off the imagery you cannot tell remember it's what you net not what you gross now for Asians in the media watch. Ocean's 8 is a huge movie that just came out and it features our friend Aquafina and maybe our to be friend Mindy Kaling. You know, they're part of the main cast and it's just really cool to see your friends be successful. It also has Rihanna in the movie, Sandra Bullock, Anna Hathaway. So it's pretty much like an all-star cast. It's funny because the most interesting person in the cast is a hip-hop music star and not even like an actress. The main takeaway is that our friend Aquafina, aka Nora Lum, is in a bunch of movies that are coming out. You're gonna see her everywhere. And the next update is, if you guys didn't see a couple months ago, I had made a video about Disney's new live-action Mulan movie. 
that has been in production for like two years already. I actually had the opportunity to send in an audition tape for one of the main lead characters. Of course, I did not get it for probably good reason because they just casted Chen Hong Hui, which is going to be Mulan's love interest in the new live action film that's coming out. He will be the lead Asian male representation in that movie. Not to mention Mulan is obviously about one of the most famous heroines of world history or Chinese folklore, whatever you want to say. The main takeaway is that Asian lead characters are either super, super good looking or super, super nerdy. And the middle who are not studs or geeks, kind of like us, we're not really represented. Progress is happening, but it's slow. A new Bruce Lee biography is coming out in the form of a book, not a movie, because that wouldn't be a biography if it was a movie, but I guess it could be a documentary, kind of like Tupac Resurrection. But Bruce Lee, of course, is probably the most universally revered Asian American in history, despite him actually having a slight accent and being, you know, partially a fob, but he counts as Asian American. This book is gonna cover some lesser known details about Bruce Lee's life, whether that's his Eurasian mom, and even the fact that he based his acting career off Clint Eastwood. Matthew Pauly, the author of this biography, who interviewed over a hundred different family members and people who knew Bruce Lee, even said this. I think Bruce Lee would be very angry that there aren't more Chinese stars in Hollywood. It is impossible to think of a romantic hero who is Asian. He would be shocked that it is 45 years since he first starred in a Hollywood film, and yet there is still isn't someone who's playing heroic romantic leads. Which is what he always wanted to do. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that it seems like a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have not. The main question and takeaway from all this is do you think it's true what someone had said to Bruce Lee back in the day? Bruce, I'm sorry. You're an oriental in a white man's world. It won't work. I, you guys let me know in the comments below. And the next headline is, in a new study it says that Asian Americans are the least likely of any racial group, including white, black, and Hispanic, to get promoted to management from a contributing role. I, I believe that this is based off the ratio in white collar workplaces. Basically, the yappy is the least likely yuppie to rise up the leadership chain. Is this due to culture, development, discrimination? I don't know, it might be all three. All right, the main takeaway is this. What is it about our culture, look, or attitude that is preventing people from seeing us as leaders? And what's gonna need to happen to change that? Next story. Han Hyun Min, who is a Korean male model who is half Nigerian but born and raised in Korea, he got detained in the UK for over two hours because they did not believe his South Korean passport was legit. And the reasoning is probably because he doesn't look Korean. He only had a Korean passport, he doesn't really speak English that well, only Korean, and he doesn't look Korean, so I think they were very, very confused. A lot of Asian countries, especially Korea and Japan, have been homogenous for a while. Homogenous meaning that by far most people in the country looked Asian. But due to the 21st century and immigration, the world is changing now. I know Asian Americans whose families have been here for generations and they still get questioned whether they're from here or not. Hey, you speak English? You from China? Yes. And no. But my face is. What I believe you're trying to say is that you've only met about four to five Asians in your life and they probably happen to be immigrants. There's kind of a lack of us in the media, so you don't really have a sense of who's American and who's not. It can be confusing, but with a little bit of help, you can avoid asking an ignorant question. The main takeaway is that the world is getting more and more multicultural, and there's a lot of people out there that find it hard to believe that Asians can be American. Clearly in Asia, they have trouble accepting people who don't look Asian as Asian. And a lot of the time when he's working in Korea, a lot of people still speak English to him even though he speaks fluent Korean and his name is Korean. Boom, last bit I'm gonna be talking about. Kelly Marie Tran ended up deleting her Instagram account because a bunch of trolly and mean Star Wars fans left a bunch of bad comments on her page. Shame on you, Star Wars fans. Apparently a lot of people were mad because they didn't care to see an Asian woman in Star Wars and if they did, they wanted her to be some super IG model. Don't be an asshole and go on her page. This is why it's important for women to speak up because they are in a different situation and that needs to be clear to everybody. I thought it was cool that a normal girl got casted in that role because honestly that's accurate representation. Plus I thought she did a great job. Shout out to Kelly. Main takeaway is that it sucks that in entertainment, a woman's worth is so tied to her looks. She can represent something so real and normal and do such a good job at it, but she has to unfairly deal with a whole bunch of angry trolls. It's messed up. I support Kelly Marie Tran, and I even hope she gets her own movie. All right, everybody, that pretty much closes up our news commentary segment thing whose title will be determined later, but we got all the articles from nextshark.com. Check it out if you get a chance, but definitely down below in the comments, let me know your commentary on it. I love to read the comments and hear your opinions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Otherwise, let me know what I should call it. I don't know. That's all I got for you right now. And until next time, I'm out. Peace. 
I got the Richie Lee collection dropping June 15th. It's dropping June 15th. 